Football still the topic on the Sportsbank Zone. CONCACAF Women's Gold Cup qualifying resumes today. And these are the fixtures. In League A, Panama versus Jamaica. In League B, Dominica versus Antigua and Barbuda. Suriname versus Guyana. And Martinique versus Nicaragua. And in League C, Grenada will take on the US Virgin Islands. In League A, Group B will have a new participant, Jamaica, having failed to get past Canada in their dual Olympic and Gold Cup automatic qualification tie in September. Join the party. Let's see how that group has shaped up so far. Panama and Guatemala have met each other once already. They shared a win. Three points apiece. Jamaica will get their campaign going tonight. Riga Girls interim head coach Xavier Gilbert had this to say about the tough conditions caused by protests in Panama. I'm not sure some experience was. Um, some of would have played in, in, uh, in Europe and on the college circuit in, in, in North America. Um, so we're going to assemble the best possible unit um, to go and represent Jamaica and hopefully they can get the job done. Um, the, there's some level of um, unrest are not so settled at the moment based on the current situation that's happening in Panama. Um, it's out of our control um, and we remain focused and keep the ladies in good spirit so that it don't affect our performance later. Uh, we might have to move, I think we're going to move to um, the, another hotel uh, which is closer to the the venue and to the airport. Um, so when we finish the game, we'll head to that hotel. So we'll, we, that will try and mitigate any challenge we'll have departing from the mountain. Interim Reggae Girls head coach Xavier Gilbert. So much to speak about when it comes to the Reggae Girls these days. And so we're pleased to be joined by the JFF General Secretary, Dennis Chung. Um, Dennis, it's a pleasure to have you back on the Sports Mag Zone. First of all, how are you doing? I'm good, man. I'm good. Fantastic. Good, um, what, what's the latest yeah. you can tell us as to what's happening in Panama? Yeah, well, um, I spoke to them today, and um, the, the coaching staff is feeling good. Um, of course, there's a protest happening there. Um, they think it's dying down a little bit, and there might be some opening back up off the roads today. But they, what, they're, what they've been doing is trying to isolate the team from all that's happening. So, you know, they don't really um, let the team be aware of all that's happening there. You know, just keep them in high spirits. I, I don't know if you'd have seen a video that was released about their free activation exercise. Team looks in good spirits. Um, I spoke to the HOD who's there also, and the head of women's football who's representing the president there. And they, they all seem in good spirits. Uh, the, the girls, we here are, are feeling very excited, you know, very enthused about representing their country. And they're going to give it their best. Um, they had a, a small training session yesterday of about an hour. Uh, and they, they worked on what tactics they need to use going into the game. Um, of course, Panama, they know, is, is always a tough opponent. But, you know, the HOD, when I was speaking to him, he said, you know, he was pleasantly surprised that the about the quality of the girls who are there because, you know, we do have some veterans. I mean, Chinilu Asha, for example, you know, she's doing very well up there right here. And, you know, of course she has the experience. Um, we have Melissa who's come from Charlton Athletic that just won the Champions Cup. Here she's, she's looking very good. Uh, the team is feeling very good. So, you know, we, we, we're looking for a good showing from them. Um, they are very driven to do the best that they can do, you know, give the opportunity that they have and, and cement themselves into the side. So we're expecting a, a good fighting performance from them. They know what needs to be done. So, you know, we're we are hoping for the best with them and wishing them all, all the best. Yeah, we'll definitely see how that goes. And quickly, Dennis, from the JFF's standpoint, there are no concerns around the safety for the team given the protests in Panama. 
No, and that was one of the things that I spoke to them about since yesterday. I've been talking to them about. They said there is no concern really with safety. Um, I think the greatest inconvenience was the fact that they had to move hotels. You know, and the one that they went to is a little distance from the field. Uh, but they don't see it as a, a huge factor. Um, and of course, they're trying to get us to a hotel that's closer uh, to the airport and also the, the, the stadium. So, you know, after the match, they, they won't have that sort of distance to travel. Uh, but no concerns really about your safety now. All right, that sounds very good. Um, let's discuss some other issues now, Dennis, um, specifically to the dispute that has been happening between the Reggae Girls and the Jamaica Football Federation, and that led to the World Cup players making themselves unavailable for the two Cup, Gold Cup qualifying matches, this Panama game, the first of those two matches. Um, what is the very latest on that issue? Have the girls been paid all that is owed to them at this stage? Well, no, the, 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 the primary amount that was owed is the difference between what we receive and what is to be received, uh, which is the, the percentage of that amount. Everything else has been paid up um, from last year, because there's some money owned from last year, match fees, everything. Even the per diem for the Olympic qualifiers that were paid after um, was actually paid. So the disputed amount really is the, the percentage on the prize money uh, that we were we, we didn't receive the balance of it yet. Um, and we, we met with FIFA on Monday. FIFA did call us on Sunday, reached out to us and say, hey, you know, can we help? So we said to them, okay, um, we know that there's a balance there for us. And they agreed to just give us the portion uh, that is to, to be paid to the girls which we will be doing that as soon as we get the funds. Um, and then there will be a balance still left there for the JFF, but we will wait on that until everything is sorted out. It, it's important for us to note that, you know, every, you know, the commitment that was made in, in, in February by the president that we pay everything, every single cent that we've collected um, from FIFA has been paid over to the girls, staff, or used for the Olympic qualifiers. Um, and, and so, you know, everything was depleted uh, from that. So we we're just not in a position to pay anymore because you, you know, you're talking about, um, well, we would have received um, for our incentive about 1.2 something. All of that was paid out uh, between all of them. Um, and then there would have been an additional amount of over 700,000, which was paid to us um, to be paid on to the girls for the 60,000 bonus net of the taxes that was paid within two days of receiving it. So the only thing that's disputed right now is that amount. And um, as but, but, soon but, as but, we get those funds. Yeah, before you go any further, Dennis, I just want to have a complete understanding of what you are saying. In the detailed release that the JFF sent out a, a couple of days ago, you referenced a $1.8 million uh, amount um, that you only got $1.2 million of. Um, if I um, am correct, 20% of that was to go to the reggae girls. The reggae girls wanted 20% of the 1.8, and you are saying you had only collected 1.2. Is it that FIFA has sent the remaining 600,000 and you now have a full 1.8 that you can pay the 20% no, 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 on? No, no. We haven't got the full amount yet. What we're saying is that what, when we met with them, they said to us, okay, how much of that portion that's left is actually due to the girls. And we said to them, we told them what the amount was, and they said, okay, they'll send that over to us in advance of finalizing all the integrity checks and the documentation. So even after we get that amount, there is still an amount that's going to be due to us. Uh, but that is, is the amount for JFF, and that is really the only amount that we've retained okay. because we would have paid every, everything else out. Has FIFA given a timeline as to when the JFF will get that amount yeah. so it can be settled with the girls? Yeah, we're hoping that we will settle everything by Friday. In fact, what we've done, we've done all the processing in terms of the banking information. So the only thing we're waiting on is to get the funds in our account 
and then we, we just push the button and basically it will be done at that time. Um, so as soon as we get notification that is there, which we're hoping that by tomorrow it will be there, we will just send an email off and say yes, approved, and then we'll pay. The, the fact of the matter is that we just can't pay um, the amount of it because we, it, you know it hasn't come, we don't have it yet. Yeah. But as soon as we get it, we'll pay it. We want to pay the money out, you know. Yeah. Um, it, it's, it's not something that we want to retain. I, I hear people talking about, you know, JFF has kept the money it, 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 in this environment. After the, remember what happened after the set, set data um, era, you know, FIFA tightened up on everything, all this documentation, you know, all of that. So the, that, that's just no possibility of that happening. And these are electronic funds, you eh? see? Yeah. This is not cash that's coming in. Yeah. Uh, what has the communication with the girls been like in recent days? Because one of the complaints from the reggae girls is that they were th they were not being communicated to in the most effective way by the Jamaica Football Federation. Um, well, I don't. I'd, I'd have to understand what you mean by effective ways, because you know we would have communicated by. Um, through the manager and also through emails directly from me um, and, 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 and also verbal communication was taking place. Um, but, you know, whatever that means, you know, I'm sure we can clarify that. Um, what I would say is that we have written to the girls and, and said to them that, um, you know, there's a grievance procedure under the contract to make sure that, you know, we all stick to it. We, we just love for us to all go through that grievance procedure. Um, and so we're awaiting the appointment of the representatives. There was some communication, which I suspect might be part of that procedure, uh, that stated three issues that they were having an issue with. Um, number one, the payment, which we just spoke about. Um, number two, was the fact that they wanted to know before being available the names of the supporting staff and number three the travel uh which basically you know is outlined in the contract travel arrangements uh so we so we expect that by the time we clear those that payment that final payment once we get it and we're hoping to get it by tomorrow then um you know it will take care of those three things because yeah. uh, nothing else has been communicated to us. All right, hold it right there, Dennis. We have to go to a break, but we'll return with more on the Sports Mag Zone. We're speaking with the General Secretary of the Jamaica Football Federation on some of the issues pertaining to the reggae girls and uh, that led up to them making themselves unavailable for a CONCACAF Gold Cup qualifying action. That starts tonight. We'll be back. Stay with us. Yeah, back on the Sportsman Zone, we're speaking with the JFF General Secretary, Dennis Chung. We're speaking about uh, some of the issues that led to the reggae girls making themselves unavailable for CONCACAF Gold Cup qualifying. And uh, based on what Mr. Chung said in our first segment, that hopefully by tomorrow, once the remaining funds come from FIFA, that the girls will be paid everything they are owed. And that aspect of the dispute will be over and done with. Um, Mr. Chung, you know the Jamaica Football Federation has taken a massive hit in, in, in this latest dispute with the reggae girls. You um, will find very few individuals siding with the JFF based on what has happened. In fact, many individuals say that it is um, incompetence and inefficiency on the part of the JFF that led to this saga, that led to this dispute. What would Dennis Chung say? Um, I don't think so. Um, I think it was, uh, the situation was clear. I mean, as I said, we paid out everything the extent that we had, you know, and, 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 and quite frankly, I think that we're actually, by doing so, we're better off because it means that a lot of the debt from last year, because a lot of this money was coming from last year, it was just not possible. I mean, if I receive a dollar and I pay out a dollar, 
you know, there's just nothing else to pay out, you know, because we do have financial governance rules that we have to follow from FIFA also. Um, so the only alternative to us was to await the final amount that's coming in and, and pay that out. There's nothing else that we could have done. Uh, so if that was the issue, then, you know, there's really nothing else. And a matter of the staffing, because that one came up in terms of the names. Um, you know, it's, I, I, I don't think that that should be a reason for unavailability. You know, um, not knowing the names of the staff. L let me know, ask you this question, Dennis. Were the girl? Do you think the girls were premature in making themselves unavailable? Premature. Um, Hasty. Well, well, it came to the back end. So you know, um, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. They, they, based on the reasons that were given, um, you know. I, I thought that those things could have been resolved, especially if the grievance procedures were followed. And that's the important thing. You know, the contract does have a grievance procedure that is set out in it. And I think that if, we, if that procedure was followed, then I don't think that we would have had the issues that we have now. And, and therefore, that's very important. You know, and one of, the re one of the things why, you know, people ask, you know, why didn't the JFF speak about it before and you know from a professional point of view we couldn't because if we did we would have been in breach of the grievance procedure under the contract and therefore although we know that we would have taken a beaten it just it, it just was not the ethical thing for us to do to actually speak about something knowing that there is a process in place that we should have followed um you know and and and, and therefore you know, I, I mean, it is what it is, you know, at this point, you know, um, when, when we saw that it was coming close, we decided that we were going to ask the coaching staff to just select a, a team, you know, put a team together. And, you know, we, we want to ensure for anyway that we have a data bank of players going forward, um, men and, and women, um, you know, that we can pull on um, for various reasons. So. Um, it is what it is, and you know, I, I don't want to go back and say, well, what if that had happened and that had happened? It, it, it doesn't make any sense. You know, what we need to do is just resolve the situation now. You know, um, the first step for me in resolving this is, as I discussed, you know, to, to get that payment it's out. You know, because we want to pay, we want to clear that, that debt. As, as I said, you know, we've paid up all the money over from last year. Yeah. You know, uh, I'm, since I've been here, we, we've paid all the per diem each match. Yeah, but you Dennis, know, what I'm getting, right, based on the use of the word, and this term has been used in a lot of articles in the Reggae Girls letter, the use of the word mistreatment. And for me, that's a very, very strong term. So sitting yeah. on, in the position that I sit, and of course, reading all these letters, listening to interviews from you, from JFF President, from everybody, it looks as if, you know, just paying off these fees may not be okay with the girls. It's as if there are many other problems that they have with the JFF well, administration. Well, yeah, well, that's the point, you know. I mean, remember, I'm not, I'm not a mind reader. If you write to me and said, these are the three things, yeah. I'm not going to read anything else because there's a procedure and the procedure first says, write about the issues. So if there are other issues, we don't know about it because it's not written. And the three things that were written were the three things that I spoke to you about. So, you know, I don't read minds. Okay. You know, and, and I'm surprised that some people who are supposed to be critical thinking because we're just, you know, running a word like that. You know, we, we have to have a process. You know, it's like you. I mean, if you were at Sportsmax and you said to your, your boss, well, listen, I have a problem and therefore this is it. You know, do you operate like that or you have a, someone that reports to you and they say, listen, I have a problem, you know, and therefore that's it. You, I don't have to tell you what the problem is, but I just have a problem. It, it's important for us to follow the process, you know, and that grievance procedure. That's why we emphasize it so much in the contract. We think it's important to follow because outside of those three things that were written to, 
you know, we really don't know what else is, is being talked about. Right. One of the um, topics also making the news, and you know, because of what we do, we have to bring our viewers up to speed with everything, was the appointment of Xavier Gilbert, where the girls felt as if um, they only found out a week before the Gold Cup qualifiers. You are the man sitting in the position, so you know better than all of us. And of course, they felt as if, you know, they were not too pleased with the way in which the news were communicated to them, even going so far to say they found out via social media message what about that hello yeah yeah uh, yeah I, I didn't hear that last one it, yeah what, what did you say i was talking about the communication issue that the girls have of course expressed with the jff saying that they even found out about the appointment of coach a week before the gold cup qualifiers and it came via social um, media message hello yeah, I lost you again. I, honest, I, I hear what you're saying. Um, you know, the truth is that we only found out that he was the interim head coach a week before also. Okay. Because remember, before that, we were looking at other options. And um, and we just decided that at that point, that the best thing to do was to ask Xavier to act as, as interim coach. So we found out then. But the, the point is that, you know, do you make yourself unavailable because of that you know is that how a team is supposed to operate and and that's the question you need to ask yourself because i understand that but there is a process for that um and and that also as you said um was something that came out in social media we have to respond to what is written to us and understand that that is important you know as i said to someone in the media a few days ago. When they say something, there is no consequence. When I say something, there is a consequence, and it could be result in a legal consequence. So I have to be careful about, and the JFF and the president has to be careful about what we respond to. We can't just respond to our posts. You know, we can't just respond to social media. Mm -hmm. We have to be very careful and professional in our response and and sometimes people are not going to like that but the fact of the matter is that we have that professional responsibility because we are responding on behalf of an organization you know we're not responding on behalf of, of a facebook profile mm. uh, you know, then, an instagram profile. okay dennis you just use the word professional in your approach and how you organize yourself you would understand though that to the general football public professionalism is the last word that people would attach to the performance of the Jamaica Football Federation, given, given its history. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, but you know, I mean, the, the thing is, Lance, um, do you say that you are going to judge a current action based on an action that had happened before? Well, you know, I, I understand that, but, you know, I, I'm not going to do that. I will yeah, but respond. Put, but to put ourselves in the, in the shoes of, of the reggae girls, prior to mm -hmm. 2019, when they historically qualified for the World Cup, they went through a lot of issues with the administration. Lance, Lance, Lance I, can't, I can't act based on 2019. Yes. Yeah, but as far as, the girls are con as far as the girls are no, concerned, no. it is continuing. So. That. They, they I understand that. Yeah. I understand that. And therefore, what needs to happen is that we need to outline the specific things. I mean, I wasn't here in 2019, so I don't know yeah, what but they as are. As far as right the girls now. are concerned, nothing has changed. Given what they are suggesting, nothing has changed. You talk about um, breach of agreements and so on, and a lot is being said about payments and so on, because the girls would think that the JFF has breached right, a, so lot of, a lot of, so a, a lot of yeah, agreements. So Tell me, tell me, what is it in 2019 versus what is it now? What are the specific issues? Well, they continue to have issues with the late payments of uh, not only match fees but per diems and so on. Breaches. Well, I it bre up, I, 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 I'm talking. I'm talking. I'm, uh, yeah, breaches with regard to ground transportation and overseas travel uh, uh, transportation, equipment issues, but, and a lot of breaches with the JFF happening even now, which had been happening a long time ago. And, and the yeah, girls yeah, believe but, that there's hardly any change started, based on I what they are experiencing by, with the previous... I, I started by telling you that yeah. we've paid all the per diems, and we paid all the per diems every match. 
and, I, and I just listed yeah. other things. So I'm suggesting that, that yeah, per yeah. diems and match fees and payments is just part of the problem that the girls are having. I just listed ground are. transportation, um, overseas travel uh, issues, equipment issues where, when they are training and preparing and so on. And to the girls, they feel as if this has been happening for years and it's still happening. Yeah, but I, I, I really don't think that those, those things were issues. They weren't? No, but, no. But it may not feel that way to the JFF, but to the girls, it, do, it does feel that way. And, 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 therefore, and, and therefore, Lance, if that is the case, isn't the proper thing to do to document those issues. We got, and, and we got a letter with three issues. I, 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 and I'm saying to, I can't speak to something that's not written to me. Yeah. But I'm, I'm told that um, email messages have been sent to you and you haven't responded. Oh, I'm not. I'm, I'm not aware of that. I'm speaking about a specific receipt, this specific instant. I forgot an email let's, with three let's, issues. Let's deal with something even more directly now because yeah. there is obviously a, a conflict between the Ambassador Silida Marley and the JFF and who the reggae yeah, girls Lance, respect. Lance, Lance, I don't know about that and I can't speak to that. You know, I'm not going to speak to things that are said by people. I don't know about it. I, I can't address those issues, right? I mean, I don't know where you get those facts from. But all right, I all right let, me put it, let, let me put it a different way. Let me put it a different way then, because I don't think it makes sense to skirt around the issues. The girls have a lot of confidence in Sidella Marley, a lot of confidence in their coach um, uh, who, whose contract was not renewed. And from where they sit, they will feel as if there are moves being made by the Jamaica Football Federation to, to get rid of the people that they have confidence and belief in and the people who have helped them to yeah. get where they are. And they are seeing signs, so, including, so, the, so. including the non-renewal of, of uh, Donaldson's contract. Yeah, so that, let me ask you a question. Yes. So let me ask you a question. Are those things that you know as a fact and were written to you? As a fact? No. I'm, what I'm stating here is a fact that Ron, Donaldson's uh, contract has not been renewed. Yes. And but, it is, but, a, but fact, it is a fact that the girls have confidence right. in Donaldson. Of course. But right. I'm so, saying to you, I'm saying to you yes. are, are those you know as a fact that those are issues that are causing the, the problem now? Well, I, I think it appears that way to me, yeah. I that's can't say it's a I fact. I haven't, I haven't spoken to the girls, and, but I'm just saying that if, I, if I was in their position, I would feel that way. Lance, 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 but that's what I'm saying. Mm. I have to go based on what is written to me. I can't speak like you. When you speak, it doesn't have a consequence. Mm. When I speak, it has a consequence. When I act, it has a consequence. Mm. So I can't do that, and that's the point I'm making. Right, so if that is an issue, sure, I mean, those are things that we can look at. But I remember what I said to you is that we, we, we have asked for um, the procedures to go through and, and to resolve these things. But I can't speak to something and, and go with supposition yeah, unless I'm sure of it because... I mean, I would, I would be saying something that might not even be an issue. Yeah, Dennis, we're fast running out of time. Um, yeah. Let me put, put it a, a different way. What's the relationship like between Sedella Marley and the Jamaica Football Federation as far as you know? Oh, as far as I know, I, I don't think there's an issue. I know the president has been speaking to her. So I don't, I don't, I don't hear that there's any issue. So you um, don't communicate are. with her directly, and you have never had an issue with the communication between yourself as the JFF Gensec and Sidella Marley, uh, a well-documented sponsor and, and, and main face of Jamaica's women's football? No, I have not. I, 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 I don't have any, any, any uh, much discussion. It usually is the president who speaks to her. It has always been like that. You know, um, and I, I, I speak with her occasionally, uh, but uh, there's, there's no change as far as I know. So, you know, all the speculation that's out there, you know, I, I can't, as I said, when I speak or do things, it has consequences. Yeah.
the, the, where, I might have as, an as opinion that, on something, but you know, I, I can't express an opinion the, just like the, that. Get your point, Dennis. The suspension of, of the players, um, when will suspension that be? The selection. No, the suspension, suspension of, of the selection, selection yeah. Right, when... No, no. As I said, and I've always been saying, what we said is we will suspend the selection process until we go through the grievance procedures according to contract, because yes. obviously there are some issues. So let us go through the, the, the procedures as outlined in the contract, right? Have a resolution, and then, you know, I think there will be a much more sustainable solution. But it makes no sense for us to try and cover it up and say, oh, well, you know, well, this has been paid out now, so there is no problem. No, let's go through the process. Yeah, well, one and, quick and that, one, that, 10 that, seconds that. before we go. What came first, the girls making themselves unavailable or the JFF um, suspending the selection process? I don't, I, don't, I, I don't want to get into that. I really don't want to get into that one, to be honest with you. What the important thing is, we are where we are now, right? And it really doesn't matter, I think, what came first, the chicken or the egg, right? You have the chicken and the egg here, right? So, you know, we're going to eat both of them, right? <laughs> um, the important thing for me is that we are here, we are, we want to resolve this situation. We've outlined a process to resolve it. And right now, the focus for us as of today is really on the match that's happening, the well-being of the senior women in, um, in Panama, you know, to get through yeah. that because, of course, the, 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 the overall <laughs> objective is the qualification to the World Cup and the match on Sunday, which we're planning for. And, and as I said, we want to have a resolution. I don't know why so many people think that it is, you know, daggers drawn. No, we want to have a resolution. Yeah, Dennis, we're, we're yeah. out of time. We're out of time. We really appreciate you having this conversation yeah. with us. And I'm sure we'll be chatting again and all the very best going forward. Yeah. Yeah, man, and, and, so, and cheer for the girls later, eh? Yeah. Lance Whitaker. <laughs> yeah, I just want to wrap the segment by giving the updates on the other results um, in some um, countries that apparently haven't had the off-the-field issues that the Jamaicans have. Uh, Grenada defeating the U.S. Virgin Islands 4-0 in their League C match. And in League B, Dominica and Antigua and Barbuda in a nil-all draw. Um, Suriname and Ghana at the moment are nil-all after 31 minutes. And, of course, we look forward to the Panama-Jamaica game tonight and see what happens there in Panama City. Yes, break time. Mm. Stay with Sportsmax on YouTube and follow us on all social pages for updates, news and entertainment. <laughs>